Hi, continuing this series on videos for NICU parents and also for uh, neonatologists and pediatricians who are interested in the neurodevelopmental outcome of premature babies. So I'll be making a series of uh, three or four videos which look at specific aspects of neurodevelopment. So in this particular video, we'll be looking at why the premature babies are at risk of developing neurodevelopmental problems. So to start with, I'll give you a definition of prematurity. So basically babies born at less than 37 weeks up to 36 weeks of gestation are premature. The babies who are born 33 to 36 weeks are the moderate or late preterm babies. The babies from 28 to 32 weeks are very preterm and the babies under 28 weeks are extreme preterm. So depending on where you are living, the ability to save the extreme preterm is limited in the developing countries, while in the developed countries, uh, there is an increasing survival of the extreme preterms. Even babies starting from 23, 24 weeks can be saved. So why is prematurity linked to neurodevelopment? The fetus develops in the mother's womb as an environment which is very conducive to the actual growth and development of the fetus. The baby is protected from noise and light. There is a regular soothing stimulation from the mother's heartbeat, the breathing of the mother, the diaphragm movements which move up and down, intestinal movement related sounds and dampened external sounds from the liker which is dampening the sound conduction. The baby is floating and the kicking movements uh, are made easier by the fluid around it. It's like having hydrotherapy for people to improve their strength when they are recovering from stroke etc. So this is a diagram which illustrates the different stages of the brain formation. So we have the neural tube formation at three weeks of gestation. Then the basic brain region starts forming. By 13 weeks, the neuronal migration begins. So the cells have started forming and the cells are migrating from near the lateral ventricles, uh, the general matrix area to the peripheral part of the brain. And from the 15 weeks onwards, the actual structural formation starts. So you can make out the current, uh, the more mature structure from the stage. From 25 weeks onwards, there is synaptic pruning starting, myelination begins and there is a growth spurt of the brain once the baby is close to be born or after birth as well. So there is a progressive increase in size and complexity of the brain. As you can see, this is a very smooth surface of the brain right till the 28 week stage. After that, the complexity, the folding as the brain develops more and more. Yeah, the folding allows more surface area to accommodate more tissue and the brain is capable of functioning more. Uh, so we have the neurulation stage when the neural tube is formed, then the proliferation stage when the cells are produced and then the migration stage continues right till birth. The, the maturation of whatever cells migrate and uh, develop as synaptogenesis where the connections between the nerve cells are formed and these connections are called dendritic connections. Then there is apoptosis or programmed cell death. So some extra cells are produced and they are programmed to die soon and uh, the ones which are supposed to survive they have a certain age that's part of the aging process as well. And then the maturation finally ends with myelination, a rapid growth of the brain in the first two years and the myelination is proceeding fast, which makes it a very effective system. So the myelination makes the conduction very quick and the system becomes more refined and effective. So the synapse formation is initially very crude. There is rapid development of multiple synapses. You can see the number of synapses is very high. And then by maturation the synaptic pruning happens so the ones that are used and more effective are retained while those which don't uh, need to be there are pruned so by six years you can see it's a much less complex pattern but it functions very effectively and uh, this six months to two year stage you can refer to my video on screen time and why we should avoid screen time in these babies and that is because the stimulation that is reaching the baby should be appropriate. If you're overstimulating the baby with uh, a screen time related activity, which is far more complex for the baby's age, you may end up in developing the synaptogenesis in a different format. So the baby may not respond appropriately. Baby may not have a three-dimensional approach. So I take this opportunity to tell you to avoid screen time in this crucial age of the child's development. So this is another reflection of how the neural tube is there, how it folds and you start getting the more defined structure by 
100 days of pregnancy and then by seven months you have a reasonably normal structure except that the folds have not formed by eight months it's still quite shallow folds and when the baby is full term you have quite a full developed brain even in term babies from 37 to 40 weeks there is a significant improvement in the maturation the way the baby feeds the way the baby sleeps uh, the response of the baby uh, even the final three weeks is important because this rapid development is taking place at that stage once a baby is born premature the quiet environment in the womb is disturbed the baby's brain is developing now in a relatively hostile environment so i showed you how much development of the brain happens uh, from say the fifth month when we can start saving babies to the ninth month so from this stage to this stage and all this development which should have happened in the quiet environment of the womb is now going to happen outside there is noise light there is no regular sleep wake cycle because nicu is not the friendliest zones uh, despite our best of efforts we have pain from handling as well as from the procedures so anyone who knows when he is disturbed from sleep how painful it feels the baby is disturbed for our examination the cares and we have to do these things to keep these babies alive but unfortunately the procedures are painful as well and each stimulus that the baby receives that is different from the normal is going to upset the way the brain is developing. In addition, there are various other factors like infection, which is quite common in the extreme premature babies despite our best efforts because they don't have a good immune system. We have reduced oxygen, which can uh, lead to hypoxia. It may be apnea. It may be the need for the ventilatory support in the first place or the fluctuation that may happen in the oxygenation levels. These babies are at risk of low blood glucose as well and the intraventricular hemorrhage and the other associated uh, scan abnormalities we see may also affect the neurodevelopment of these babies because as I told you in the beginning the germinal matrix is the area where the neural uh, cells proliferation happens and the intraventricular hemorrhage in the extreme preterm babies may affect this early stage of brain development. So as we discuss these stages of brain development may be altered by the noxious stimuli that we just discussed. Most NICUs follow newborn individualized developmental care and assessment program also called NITCAP or similar practices. In our unit we follow most of these, the boundaries, the switching off of the lights at certain time, minimizing the intervention and so on. So minimizing intervention is a separate topic and I'll be making a video on that soon. It's very important that we cluster care as well and we give careful attention to pain control. You can review the video I made on empathy to the baby's feelings as well. So we should start empathizing uh, when we think about anything that involves handling the baby. You think whether we need to do it immediately. Can it wait? Is the baby sleeping? Do I need to wake up the baby? And so on. Reducing the light, noise and encouraging skin to skin care music therapy and regular early intervention which we will discuss later are all important in streamlining and minimizing the impact of this noxious external environment on the baby's brain development. So in the next video I'll be reviewing an overview of neurodevelopmental problems that can happen in both uh, preterm babies as well as the high risk term babies. I hope uh, this video is useful and do follow the channel and for following the series as well.